God, thy mercy, O Lord, held me when I said I cannot. Hello and good morning. Super delighted to bring to you the show this morning. This is the Strange Arts of God. My name is Bethel Oswick and I am your host this morning. This is the NSPPD Testimony Show where we get the singular honor to sit with experts to look over some of the amazing miracles we saw God do in the course of the week. And in case you're new and you're asking what is NSPPD and I'll ask you, where have you been? NSPPD is the new season's prophetic prayers and declarations brought to you by Streams of Joy International. Join us weekdays, Mondays to Fridays, 7 a.m. across our social media platforms as we change our world, as we shake our world, as we turn our worlds around uh, through the power of prayer. And joining me this morning is an amazing, a dear friend to the show, no other than the consultant, family physician of the person of Dr. Kelechi Onyeri. <laughs> You're so welcome Thank this you, morning, Pastor sir. Bethel. Thank you good so much. Good to have yeah, you. Good to be here with you, too. Awesome. You were in the show last week yes, and you're here again. It's a back to back <laughs> thing. Uh, awesome. Thank, Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Today is the D Day. Uh -huh. It's the D Day, uh -huh. 24th of uh -huh. February, 2024. Yes, yes, so. And it's the Ghana NSBD Prayer Conference. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. Wow, we've waited for this day and it is finally here. Finally here with us. Previously, we've seen God do amazing things. You know, we've seen God do things that have blown our minds mm -hmm. in the UK, in yeah, America. Yeah, it's in America. So ask you now we're seeing in Africa. Now we, we're coming to yes, Africa. We are here. <laughs> so what should the people expect? I'm sure that a lot of our viewers are watching the show from the venue this morning. So what should they expect in the program I, today? I tell you something, sir. The truth is this, the expectation is palpable. Mm. You know, even before now, people have been clamoring. Mm. When are we going to have NSPPD prayer yes. conference in America? And yes. you know, Ghana has been agitating True. for a very long time. These True. Ghanaians, eh? <laughs> True. They've been agitating for NSPPD prayer conference. Mm. And now it's actually at our doorsteps. Mm. And I think that this is like bringing NSPPD prayer conference close to home, mm. back to us and everything. So I know the expectation is quite high. Mm. If you look at all the testimonies that we've been seeing in the Couple, last couple of weeks, of course you can know for sure that what God is about to do will exceedingly mm. blow our minds. Oh, amazing, blows amazing. Our minds. I, you know, I just want to say keep that expectation very high. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't matter what the issue is. It doesn't matter how big or small it is. The God of the fire altar is there with you today and you are definitely living with your testimony and with your evidence in your hand. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As always, we've seen God do amazing things this week and let's just look at a highlight of some of these amazing miracles we got to see in the course of the week. <music>
NSPP doesn't seem to amaze me. Yeah. Because we just, it's like he's on the increase every time every we time, see God do every things time. that will just blow mm. our minds. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, on today's lineup, we have three amazing testimonies. And the first testimony is from our sister, Mrs. Joy, from Abuja, testifying of club food reverse without surgery. And a second testifier is Mrs. Julia from Delta States is testifying of 20 years mm. of barrenness broken. Mm. And then our third and final testifier is Mrs. Ogochuku from Abuja, metastatic cancer wow. reversed. Wow. Wow. Where are you watching from? <laughs> Could you just tell us, just put it on the live stream and tell us where you're watching from. Have you shared this live stream? Please do that and we will be right back. What God cannot do does not exist. My baby, when it was getting to nine months, I started noticing he was standing on his toes and his heels weren't touching the ground. It kept getting worse when he got to the 12th month, as one year. It came worse where he started hanging his leg, even when crawling. And that was where we were concerned. And we decided to try medical explanation. Uh, the pediatrician referred us to an orthopedic doctor at the Garuki Hospital, um, where we saw the doctor. He told us a shocking news that my baby will not work. I didn't want to know the name of what he called the condition or the deformity was honestly i can't remember because i never placed the name in my head what he called the name and said that certain things or certain measures had to be taken if not he won't be able to work so first that they would have to manipulate his feet the bones in his feet for eight weeks and as they manipulate, they will cast the feet. And that manipulation meant massaging of the bones, breaking of the bones, and casting of the feet for eight weeks. That's not all. He will undergo a surgery at his ankle, where he will be, they will put a metal to help in bringing down or helping him aid his feet to with the heel of his feet to touch the ground. That's not all. After the surgery, that's not all. Then he will wear a special shoe till he's three years old. I was, I was down. I, I like, okay, the pain this boy will go through. That's first. Secondly, surgery. How does the baby go through surgery? How do you even starve the baby for eight hours so that the baby will undergo surgery? A lot of this. And so we decided to now gather the funds so we could start the procedure. As to Jerry, the money wasn't coming. We couldn't gather the money. That was the number one miracle. Yes. We couldn't gather the money. We took communion every day. When I'm taking, he's taking. When we're taking communion, he's taking communion. On November 20th, you mentioned his case. He said, it's a baby with curved feet. Let it be reversed. I see a baby, ha, go laba with a club foot, rebe adabasha, ele korasha, ele bea without any surgery. I command, let that feet be straightened out. Right now, right now, right now. When we heard that, I was in my room, I fell on the floor. Everybody, the granddad, grandma, we shouted like our life depended on it. December 20th, my son took five steps. I couldn't help it. I couldn't help myself. I was looking at it. I couldn't shout. I was saying, if I shout, he may get startled and fall and not move again. I told the dad, dad, you believe me, like, I'm just maybe trying to motivate him when he saw the boy moving. We couldn't help, we couldn't shout. Father just grabbed me and we were shouting for joy in our hearts. Our baby is moving. He's taking steps. 
to the glory of God. This boy is walking. This boy couldn't wear shoes. During his dedication, he couldn't put shoes on because anytime he wears shoes, it hurts. He'll be crying. He couldn't wear shoes. This boy is walking. He can wear shoes. He can run around. He even runs more than even walking now. And the one that shouts in the room, walk, walk. It's Eroy. Eroy sees who? Eroy sees. He sees. God, I thank you. Pastor Jerry, the crown, the glory on your head. And the crown on your head will not be cut short. God bless you. Hallelujah. Wow, praise hallelujah, the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> wow. Truly, a sees. A sees. You know, you know what amazes me about mm. this test? So many things about this test. But you know, they received the word on the 20th of November. Mm -hmm. And by the 20th of December, in one month, in one he month, was already walking. He was already walking. My God. For my something God. that would have taken several years. Several years. Several years of corrective. Of corrective um, um, manipulations mm. for them to take for them to occur for that particular um, walking steps to, to occur. To, to occur. Wow. It would have taken several manipulations. You know, I wanted to ask. She said something. She said, at the ninth month, that was when they noticed, mm. you know, that he was not um, he was walking with his toe and mm. all that. So I wanted to ask, does it mean that? He was born normal and then, you know, developed the club foot or he had always had it and they did not notice, you know, um, well, the club foot. It, it's a bit surprising okay. because most times, most uh, people, by the time they are born, mm. you are able to notice some of these things. Mm. Um, okay, by uh, way of understanding, club foot, actually, it's the foot that is affected. Okay. Now, you find out that the foot has several bones, almost about 26 bones. Mm. Now, but the specific bones that are affected, there are about three of them. Mm. The talus, the cal um, cal uh, calvus, and then the um, navicalum. Mm. Now, what happens is that those particular bones are the ones that are affected in the um, pathology of club foot. Okay. Now, if you look at the foot, the foot has three regions. You have the forefoot, the midfoot, and the hind foot. Okay. So the most important areas of affectation are actually the midfoot and the hind foot. Okay. So it causes uh, a kind of a caving, and then it's as if the foot is trying to come together an adduction, mm. and then you now see that it's now as if the the legs are um, put in like as if like as if like the toes of a horse, mm. the equinos. So you have the calvus, you have the adductus you have the varus and then you have the equinus that make up the four components of club, club foot. So it's actually a deformity. Okay. So you can actually see the deformity. Mm -hmm. um, club foot usually occurs, there are um, types of club foot. Okay. You, the, the causes of club foot could be position of the baby. Mm -hmm. Now, if the baby positions itself or itself, in such a way that the foot is compressed okay. in a particular position within the birth, inside the womb of the woman. Okay. For a long time, the foot is compressed, is not moving. Either mm -hmm. maybe the amniotic fluid is not adequate, so the baby is not able to move adequately, or probably like a very large baby, and then you now have that foot is now compressed. Okay. So you find out that the baby is born with a club foot. Oh. You know, also, I, was, I was about asking, mm. thank God you just said yes. this, because I was about asking, when we talk about club foot, is it only a congenital abnormality or is it something that can be affected because of maybe a virus or, mm -mm. or mm -mm. something? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It just happens. It's a, it's a, it's a, you see, it's a deformity of the bones. Oh. It's not an infection. Okay. It's a deformity of the bones. Oh. So what happens is that the bones probably have stayed long in a particular position and oh. they are growing in that position. Oh. So oh. as they are growing in that position, the baby comes out with that deformity. Oh, okay. So it's a deformity. It's a bone deformity. deformity. It's a deformity of structure. Okay. So is it something that would just normalize without any kind of uh, medical intervention, especially in the case of this little child? Mm. Yes, we know because they went to the doctor and mm. there were some you know, solutions that were, they were told them, there will be surgery, there will be corrective this and all. So is it normal to have that level of deformity and then in one more time, everything disappears 
and the child is now walking. You know, the thing is that I wish um, um, you've seen a, if you've seen a child with a club foot, you really understand that it's not um, it's not it's not like a rubber. <laughs> This is like the bones have become fixed it's, in a particular position. Oh. So what you're taking advantage is that because that baby is still growing, mm. the, um, the, 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 the joints that mm. of the, the joints or the articulate, articulating joints of the bones have not completely fixed. Mm. So there's room for improvement. Okay. So what you're trying to do now is that you're taking advantage of the fact that these are growing bones, mm. growing joints, growing cartilages, growing ligaments, to now use a cast to redirect. To redirect. Oh. And this is, this, is, this is a process that will take months and years. Yes. To redirect. Oh. Do you understand? Mm. To redirect the, the limb in such a way that it maintains its normal position. Mm. Now, at that point in time, like what she said, mm. the tendon which has been fixed, the Achilles tendon, is fixed in such mm. a position that it's actually drawing the bone mm. in such a way mm. so that the, this part of the, of the foot is now resting on the floor. Mm. So you now need to surgically release the tendon. Mm. So you're saying that when a Roy steps in, yeah. he does a quick walk in this was a quick. This was a complete, oh my God. you know, this was a complete, oh my God. this was a complete walk of righteous work of God. Because the point is that at every point in time, mm. this is, you know, Eve, you need to understand that these children will have to wear this, um, this cast, cast. for and up, to, shoe. up to, and a special shoe. No, just look at, wear this cast for a significant number of hours in the day and in the nice. night. Ah. So it's not like they just, it's like a shoe that you wear and then when you want to go to bed, you now throw it off. No, you wear the cast both day and night. So at the corrective uh, a process will take place as the bones are growing. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, it just, it, just, it just tells me that somebody watching this live stream, especially those of us at the Ghana NSBD prayer conference, God is about to do a quick walk in your life Amen. today. If he can do it in one month, then he can do it in two hours. In two hours. Then he can do it in one hour. Yeah, exactly. Then he can do it in one minute. <laughs> so it simply means expect a creative yes. miracle today. Yes. Amazing, yes. Amazing, amazing, amazing. You know, before we, we, we leave this testimony, mm. she said something. When they told them all it would cost, they went out in search of the money and the money was not forthcoming. Yes. And so he was like, this is the first miracle. This is the first miracle. God is saying, we don't, I don't want you to break any bone. Exactly. I don't want you to take my glory. Leave it. I will do the work. I will do oh the my, work. Oh my because God. the point is that if she had the money, mm. she would have opted for whatever the doctors would True. have. Yes, would have True. pointed out. But mm. the thing most importantly mm. is that the whole family, uh, it wasn't just about her, just about the mother, the family, the grandfather, the, grandfather. the father, mm. the mother, they were all, so there was a synergy that was built in to say, look, our faith is activated mm. that this must work. Mm. And wow. Eroy stepped in. Hallelujah. You know, Papa would always say that that thing you are saving money for, ah, God will give it to amen. you as a gift. Amen. And I want to prophesy to you, that thing you are saving money for, amen. God will give it amen. to you as a gift. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We give God praise. You know, these things are the things that we, when we see them, we know that indeed the God of the fire altar is all out to bring joy yeah. and peace to homes and Amen. to families. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, moving to our second testifier, and our second testifier once again is Mrs. Julia from Delta State, and she's testifying of 20 years of barrenness broken. Have you clicked on the share button? Please do that, and we'll be right back. Mm. And I gave birth to this, my bundle of joy, after 20 years, on the 1st of February, 2024. And her name is Treasure Elozino Eloho. This is Mrs. Julie Oshoku. I'm giving the testimony from Delta State, Nigeria. My friend, hello, Usebe, send me the link again. That was December 2022. I became committed during that time. So right from that December, I started following up. And 
I'll be believing God for the fruit of the womb. Even my first marriage failed due to because I could not have a child. I got married again to the team, to this wonderful man. I've been going from places to place to have to look for the fruit of the womb, prayers and all that. But with the money spent, auto doors, going to places, taking fertility drugs, it was not working. Then yeah, men were setting. Because by May this year, I will be 50 years. I spoke to that, my friend, and I say, Why are you discouraged? Are you not on the altar? What God cannot do does not exist. I came into it. I started following up. My husband now did not even raise. I played with this thing. Oh Lord, show us mercy. I told my husband that I cannot cry. That as far as on the fire altar, a man would be raised. I prayed the Oh Lord, show me mercy. Not up to five minutes. My husband man will jump back to life. I don't even know the one that I kill I tune to. But I know I play that oh Lord show me mercy. Holding my husband's hand, putting the phone beside his mouth. And immediately his mouth will jump back to life. I'm still trying to be brief. Pastor Jerry is big declaring that it will happen in June. It will happen in June. Somebody tonight it will happen in June. I wish you were screaming louder. You are releasing it in the atmosphere. Somebody turn down. I hear the Lord say, tell them to change it. Tell them to change what. One that I kill, I tune to. But I know I play that, oh Lord, show me mercy. Holding my husband's hand, putting the phone beside his mouth. And immediately, his mouth jumped back in life. I'm still trying to be brief. Pastor Jerry is big declaring. That it will happen in June. It will happen in June. Somebody tonight will happen in June. I wish you were screaming louder. You are releasing it in the atmosphere. Somebody turn the higher. I hear the Lord say, tell them to change it. Tell them to change what they are saying. And the Lord says, I declare it this way. It has happened in June. I kill to that one. Seriously. On the 12th or the 13th. Behold. When the test came. Doctor said, "Oh, that vision is true. He tested positive." I said, "What? After 20 years, I tested positive. After the Lord waiting on the Lord, I tested positive." And Pastor Joe said, "How will you shout?" I shouted. I was shouting. I was shouting. So that the shouting was just I started shaking. I started shaking. The doctor said they should hold me down because the shaking was just too much. And I gave birth to this my bundle of joy. After 20 years, on the 1st of February, 2024, and her name is Treasure Elozimu Eloho. Hey! Hey! Talk about taking it literally. <laughs> my God, my this God. Woman. <laughs> In, this woman, oh, this woman you know when the Bible says the violent <laughs> will take it by, by force. force. <laughs> This woman should be put in the book of Hebrews. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What part we of this testimony we do may, we talk about we and leave jacked, the other? We may jack their husband's manhood back to life. <laughs> my God. <laughs> oh, my God. 20 years. 20 years. Of barrenness. Broken. broken. And you know, it's so disheartening. She said she lost her first marriage yeah. because of this. Issue, yes, and she got married to a good man. A good man. So the only way she wanted to compensate this man for your goodness, goodness was to give him a child, to give him a child. And you know, it, while they were still, you know, battling with, it was like more things just wanted to just mess up the whole matter. She said. In the course of it, she went into monopause. In the course of it, the husband lost his election. It, it was a few, look, 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 look. You, it's all explainable. It's explainable if this woman decides to come out and say, look, I don't have a child. Why? I'm in my menopause. It's explainable. Mm. My husband has erectile dysfunction. It's explainable. So she could have explained anything away. Mm. It's not my fault. Mm. My husband has erectile dysfunction. Mm -hmm. It's not my fault. Mm -hmm. I'm already menopause. It's not my fault. But she believed. She believed. But she believed. She said the gold of the fire altar changes you things. See, and you know, when she, when she was talking about, forgive me, I'm going back to the issue of the erectile dysfunction. Yes. When she was handling that mat on the fire altar, the answer came immediately. immediately. 
She said she played one oh Lord. Show me. She doesn't even know which one. She just knows that it was oh Lord, show me mercy. And she placed the phone on the man's manhood, held the man's hand and put the phone on the man's manhood. She expected a result because she knew that this was the process for me to get my child. I need this man to have an erection for me to have my child. You know, the point is this. This is one of the things I, always, I, I appreciate about families being in agreement. Mm. Because the point at this point in time, mm. the man was a willing partner. Mm. A willing partner. True. So he caught up to her faith. She was one that connected to the altar. She was one that connected to her through her friend, Eloha, yeah. who now connected her to the, who now introduced her to the altar. To the altar. So she was a, they now got the husband involved. So there was, the man was a willing partner to whatever he was about to At do. At this point, can I ask, what could lead to erectile dysfunction? It's, it's quite numerous. It's quite numerous. Okay. The point is that you need to, uh, first of all, understand that um, um, erection is, uh, is a, it, it, it's a stimulation that has to do with a lot of factors. Okay. The brain receptors looks at, um, looks at what it sees, and then the um, hormones are stimulated, then the nerves, and then blood supply to the penis to cause erection to mm. occur. Mm. At any of, any, any of those processes, anything can go mm. wrong, and a person can have erectile dysfunction. Mm. So from the point of even the sight, if there's partner discord, if there's partner discord most Cases of uh, erectile dysfunction could be from partner discord, maybe one issue or the other, and then the interest is no longer there. That's number one. Number two could be from drugs. There are so many medications, antihypertensives, a lot of medications, anti-cancer medications, prostate medications that are all implicated in the causation of erectile dysfunction. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. about the um, diseases, diabetes, hypertension, all mm -hmm. on their own? could also be mm. a cause of erectile mm. dysfunction. Mm. Even trauma, testicular mm. traumas, mm. even some habits, smoking, mm. um, alcohol, chronic alcohol use, chronic smoking use. Mm. Then also, especially for the younger persons, people now, who now start indulging sexually transmitted infections, mm. which by the time they're exposed to it, will now go and cause a nerve damage, nerve damage that they don't have that sensation that feeling of sensation mm -hmm. to be able to like, get adequate erection. So they're quite numerous. You know, so you, you see that she didn't even bother going to the hospital to know why it happened. She didn't even bother All wanting to find out. The goal of the, of the fire, fire altar, altar will deal, with, with, this deal with, with this matter. And will deal with it immediately. Uh, and you know, following this testimony, you see that her miracle came after menopause. Menopause. You see, eh, I, I, just, I just love God. You know how God follows people, eh? And God must have seen this person's heart and just wanted to use her to show us in mm. this time. Mm. In this time. Mm. Imagine 20 years ago, mm. we were not here. Mm. Streams of joy, uh, um, um, fire altar was not, was, not here. was not here. But God had a plan. Mm. He positioned this woman Hallelujah. so as to show somebody out there Hallelujah. that no matter how many years it takes, Hallelujah. no matter how many years it takes, so he just packaged her mm. and kept her ready by till the first marriage failed. And God said, look, I'm a God that restores with compensation. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do not just restore you back to your home. Ah, yeah, I do not yeah, just yeah. restore you back to a marriage. I restore you and I compensate you. Mm. Despite whatever it takes, whether mm. it is menopause, erectile dysfunction, when I'm ready to compensate, I compensate in a way that shows that I'm the one that is doing it. Hallelujah. You, you know, it, like I said previously, it was like when Elijah was with the prophets of Baal, yeah. and when he wanted to you know, make that sacrifice, he said, pour water. Pour water. Hey, hey. You would have, the normal <laughs> human being would have said, put fuel, put fuel to help the fire. Pour water. Pour water. water. The water that should quench the fire. That should quench the fire. Pour water. You know, our God is such an amazing. Because there will be menopause. There might be erectile dysfunction, but the fire will come. Pour, Deal with it. No, pour, pour more. Poor old age. Hallelujah. Poor old age. Oh. Poor you didn't old put age. that one. Poor old age. Poor second marriage. <laughs> Poor second marriage. M maybe even third marriage. Even third marriage. But the God of the fire, fire altar. altar. And I just want to say to somebody on this live stream, the God of the fire altar, he sees you. He sees. And it doesn't matter how long you've been waiting no, for your evidence. No. As your amen will turn that, carry your evidence now. Amen. Carry your own tangible amen. evidence now. Amen. And like mommy, Eno will say, 
carry your boy and boy. Yes, so girl and, and girl. girl. Two boys <laughs> and girl. However you want it, carry, carry it, it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Such an amazing thing. And she said, for the first time, she tested positive. positive. And she took it literally. When Papa would say, how would you shout? How would you shout? She took, it was not a matter of, oh, thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. She was screaming. She said she did it so much that she, she started shaking. <laughs> the excitement was too much. I can imagine after 20, 20 years. 20 years. We love the God of the fire. Yes, yeah, so, yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you, thank and you. our third and final testimony is from our sister, Ogochuku from Abuja, and she's testifying of metastatic cancer reverse. Once again, have you shared this live stream? Somebody needs to be a part of this live stream. Somebody needs to be a part of the amazing thing God is doing. Share, and we'll be right back. What God cannot do does not exist indeed. My name is Ogochuku. July 2022, I noticed a little lump on my breast. So uh, casually, I just went into the hospital. Even the doctor who saw me then said it was nothing. And I said, oh, I wanted to check. I wanted to be sure that it's nothing. So from the imaging, they said there was something. Then biopsy. Then it came out that it was cancer, confirmed. So, the first chemotherapy I took in um, Enugu almost killed me. I've been seeing link of uh, NSCP that I usually don't watch it. I was just open. It was usually noisy. Then I closed. But when I came down here, my sister-in-law in the morning, 7 o'clock, she had keyed in. So I traced this place. I came here and started my treatment. Did nine rounds of chemotherapy, had surgery, paid for radiation, and then... I started having pains on my back, on my chest. At some point, I won't be able to stand up. I have two little children, five and three. They will be pushing me, one will draw me on the from the hand. Say, stand up, stand up. I say, okay, just help me. Whenever you want to stand up, call me, I will help you. My husband was not in town then. So when he came back, he saw it and said, ah, you have to go for another um, test and all that. Came back to Abuja, did a chest CT and abdominal pelvic and found out that the cancer had spread. So, um, <laughs> yes, so it has spread to the liver, to the lungs. There was tumor here, tumor there. If you see the results, every doctor we sent the report to, they said, even a doctor in the UK said there was nothing they could do about it. That coming to the UK was a waste of money. I remember that morning I went out. I called God. I said, it is you or you. There was no other option. And at that point, I started coming here every morning. I will come here in the morning. I will stay. If I see people raising their papers up, I will raise. I, I will come to church with a big folder. When I line up all the whole results, because I did MRI. They said they wanted to do an MRI to also see. When they did an MRI, the whole, in doctor's words, he said the whole bones were riddled with the disease. So the lungs, the liver, the bones everywhere. So I would line up all the results on the floor. People were looking at me. I would come to church and cry and cry. One of the doctors in the UK posted the results in one of their platforms and said their enemy had some few, few months to live. So I started discussing with my husband that this family member is good though. Maybe my children will stay with them after everything because I was so scared and everything. So, but when I started coming here, I don't know. From crying, you will see me. I will dance through into this door. I will dance. If you see the way I dance in church, after all those, because at some point, the first episode, you know, the point of fear. Later on, I had joy from nowhere. I will come to joy. I will church. I will dance. I will lift up my papers, drop it in my bag, come to the altar. I will, I will stay all through the service. Somebody introduced me to one doctor, a Muslim, a Fulani man. Immediately, I got to the hospital. That the man, the first thing he said, he looked at the reports, raised his head up and said, what God cannot do does not exist. <laughs> well, he said, we're going to start treatment. They were giving me palliative care. Okay, what he means is that it's not curative, it's just management. After four months, that was in, in November, the doctor said I was going to do a review to know if there was disease progression. My brethren, when I went to do the test in the hall that day, I was listening to NSCP, the people were filled up. They would say, Pastor Jerry will say, if you have this one, kneel down. If you have this one, stand up. I was kneeling down, doing all the whole thing, being so dramatic without, I didn't even see anyone. When I went in for that test and came out, the results came out, I was inside Keke. I was screaming, normal lungs, 
normal liver. The whole thing. That is the first testimony. The doctor said, ah, this is a miracle. Now, I'm seeing, because we, I don't know if this, they showed the, the report, the MRI. It was showing T1, this one, so many things I didn't even look at because I thought all my results. This one, I had to look for it to send it this morning. I, when Pastor Jerry was saying, yeah, I would see. Yeah. So after that review, he said, oh, we're not going to send you in for radiation. Because if you have, if this result is so good, we don't know what is on your back. I would like you to do a PET scan. Then I said, okay, doctor, I will do it in February because I was waiting for 21 days fasting. I came down from Enugu on the 7th. He started coming here every morning. I will come here in the morning after the fasting and prayer. I will go in the evening. I will come here. I went to see the doctor. He booked me for a PET scan on the 5th of February. He said Egypt or Lagos. I said, oh God, no Egypt or no money. Don't send me to Lagos. Let me just and go to Lagos. After the prayer, my sister was saying, what are we going to do? I said, I don't know. Just leave me. The God that provided money for the first one will do it. I went into the sitting room. And then she screamed my name. Como, a friend of hers, not my friend, oh, called her and asked after me. And she said, I'm thinking of how to go and do a test in Lagos. The guy said, why Lagos? Why not Egypt? The way I went to Egypt, from the visa to the flight ticket to, to the protocol. An Egyptian was waiting for me with my name. The car that took me, everything was like a diplomatic move. I did everything. It was all expense paid for. God did that so that when these results come, they will not doubt it. The results came out, and the doctor said, there is no cancer. They can't see. This is my evidence. This is my evidence. It did not end the way the devil planned it. It did not end in shame. It did not end in shame. The doctor said it's magic. Then he said it's not magic. It's miracle. He said no more radiation. He said no more radiation. He showed me my skeleton on the screen. He said, look at your brain. Look at the result before. Look at this one. There is no basis for comparison. It can only be God. This result comes once in a while. I've come to say what God cannot do, does not exist. You see this error, error sees me. And again, my friend, Norma Nozier, she has been a friend indeed. Whenever I come to church, she will come, help me to sit down, help me to stand up. She was not praying for herself, but Eroy saw her. And she met her husband in my house on the 24th of December. She is married. Thank you, Jesus. No basis for comparison. Oh, Jesus. Amazing God. Amazing God. I so love that statement. No basis for comparison. The before and the after. There's no comparison. It's just before, God in between, then after. No. Oh, my God amazing you know she said she had a, a a lump and she just casual casually walked into the hospital to just you know be sure that she's okay and she got a result that changed her world forever can i pray for you that evil day mm. that turns the life of people oh. around that turns their life upside down that day will not meet Amen. you that day that they will just you will, that you will go for a Amen. regular checkup and Amen. you will come out with a cancer result Amen. it will not meet you Amen. i said it will not meet Amen. you oh my wow. god you know what what's amazing me is the age of the person <gasps> If you just look at the young girl, young lady. you know, when you're looking at, uh, when you're hearing some of these things, you're expecting that this person is about 40s or 50s, because these are the common age that you expect to see such kind of um, um, virulent spread of, the ca of cancers. And, you know, the um, testimony actually uh, pinpointed almost every point where cancer spread, especially breast cancers. She talked about the liver, she talked about the lungs, she talked about the brain, and she talked about the bones. You know, and before, nothing before, was before, spread. Before you, before you go that far, what is metastatic cancer? It has spread, no, oh. <laughs> oh. It has spread, it has left 
the primary site okay. where it is okay. and has spread beyond the site into distant organs. Oh. So we are no longer talking about a cancer. In in the, a, we're not just cancer. Look, talking about a cancer in the breast. Okay. We're talking about the cancer from the breast has spread to involve to organs that oh. have no business. Oh. Oh. Do you understand so me? Much, well, that yeah, means, uh, that's what it means. That has gone to involve other organs that have no business with the primary site. Mm. So this is the cancer of the breast. Now going to the lungs to go and start going there to go and spread mm. and invade the lungs. Mm. It has gone to the brain to go in there to invade the brain. Mm. It has gone to the bones. Mm. Now, what it does is that, just like what she said, lactic lesions, it starts eroding, mm. eating into the bones, such that the bones now become so brittle and oh fragile child. that they can collapse and cause, wow, crazy severe pains. So it is saying that this cancer has left the primary site where the cancer oh. originated from. Because if the cancer was still at the primary site, then of course, it's amenable to surgery. Take out the breast, do a radiotherapy, mm. and you to control this cancer, mm. and after some time, you find out the person is cancer-free. Mm. But this is a situation whereby it has gone through, either through the blood or through the lymphatic system, and has spread to distant organs of the you body. You know, she started off by saying, after the first diagnosis, she, she went through chemotherapy, and in her words, she said it almost killed her. It, the, the point is, this are the, it's obvious, that's at the point at the time of diagnosis that the cancer had spread. Oh my God. So we're not just looking at a cancer from the point of diagnosis that was just in, um, localized to the breast. Mm. We're looking at a cancer that was away from, of course, it's a possibility that she has surgery so yeah. as to curtail the continuous spread of the cancer. the cancer. But at that point in time, chemotherapy would have been needed. So that's why probably they also needed other forms of therapy. Yeah, because she did the first, according to her, she mm. did the first in Enugu and then went to Abuja and had nine rounds of yes. another chemotherapy. Yes. Yes. And, you know, and I'm asking, is it, is, it, is it something we see often that one will go in for nine rounds of chemotherapy and come out worse than they went in because she said, it was after the chemotherapy, the one she had in, uh, in Abuja, that she now discovered, you know, she started having pains, and when she went back and discovered it was all over. Is, is this something that... You know, the truth about the whole thing, like chemotherapy is not an easy process. Chemotherapy is not an easy process. Chem chemotherapy is not for the faint-hearted. Oh <laughs> so you must be well prepared for chemotherapy. The blood must be adequate, the, ad um, 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 the liver, the kidneys, the ch a lot of things must be have been assessed that this person is fit. Yes. You have to be FIT fit mm. for chemotherapy. You can't just go into chemotherapy just like that. Oh. So the point is this, uh, which we're trying to assess, uh, make here is this. This woman has gone, let's look beyond the chemotherapy mm. because chemotherapy has failed. failed. Let's look beyond the radiotherapy. Radiotherapy has failed. Mm. We are looking at a woman who was staring death in the face. Uh. We're looking at a woman whose prognosis was very poor. Mm. We're looking at a woman where the conventional therapies for management of cancer has failed. failed. Because she said they sent the results to yes. the UK. Yes. And they looked at them and told that there's no need coming to the they UK. Had already, they were already given a prognosis. So from the prognosis, from what they had seen, they could also, also already prognosticate that there's no point of wasting your money, money to come. To and, come. and they said it was, it was something that yes. would take just in, in yes. a few months. The person. So we're looking at a woman who was staring death in the face. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And yeah. she, you know, she said when she went to see, you know, the, the last doctor, she said he was a Fulani, you know, Muslim doctor. And he looked at her and he said, what God cannot do? This is a what God cannot do yes. matter. Yes. Because at the end of the day, what he ended up giving to her, you know, she said it was political. So what, what, what is it that the doctor will see and say, okay, what we're going to be doing now is palliative care? I, I believe that God was using that man to reinforce her faith. Mm. You know, God can use a donkey. If God could use a donkey True. to speak to mm. a man of God, mm -hmm. then God can also use a man. Mm. It's even easier mm. to speak to a man, to reinforce mm. that woman's faith. Mm. So she came there with an expectation. Mm. But the truth was that what was going to be offered was palliative. So what is palliative? Comfort care. Mm. Palliative is comfort care. We're not looking at cure. We're not looking at making sure that we're taking away this problem. We're only going to see how you can be able to like relieve pain, mm. put you in the greatest level of comfort, control the symptoms so that when death comes, you have an easy mm. passage to death. So I trust that God was using that man to reinforce to her 
what he wanted to do. You know, there was something else we had in the course of the week. One of the testifiers, I think on Thursday, she mm. said, she said um, she had half two fallopian tubes mm. blocked and mm. all, and she went to the doctor, and the doctor said, ah, it must be IVF. Unless you are part of those people that believe that what God cannot do. do. <laughs> he said it as mockery, I accept you are part of those And she took it as a challenge. It's a challenge. You know, it's just the same thing like you just said. When no, she, no, no, God no, no. was using to remind her that this is where I step in. And you know, one of the things we've, 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 we've discovered on the fire altar is when we get to the part where man says, I've done my best. Yes. There's nothing else I can that's do. When, that's when God activates. God steps in. God steps in and activates his manifest presence. Ah, yeah, yeah, and yeah, it yeah. never fails. Ah, yeah, yeah. And it never fails. And this is a young mother of a, two children of three and five. And she, you know the point and is And they're looking at, okay... Who would take care uh, of my child when I go? Uh, and was she right? Yes. Ah, yeah. Was she right? Yes. She was very right in planning. Mm -hmm. Because at this point in time, you now start doing what you call um, 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 advanced um, uh, planning. You have to plan for your death. You want to know how you're going to be mm. buried. How mm. you, what are you going to, who's mm. going to, at the point of um, uh, when you go into coma, mm. what happens? These mm. are things that I expected that this woman should be doing at mm. this point. Because it's evident that there's no hope. But a Roy. A Roy. But a Roy. You know, the, the, the two things I, I found in her testimony, number one is, she said when she was in the hospital, everything Papa said do, she did. She was not concerned about those who were around her. She just knew that if I belong to a tribe, it was the same thing that happened to her when she was in church. She said she, she saw people raising, she would, whatever she saw the people do, she would do. Mm. When you belong to a tribe, do the things that the people in the tribe do. You know, sometimes we are shy. Ah, no. ah, yeah, yeah, they yeah, will yeah, say, yeah, 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 yeah. they will look at me. She no said, way. She was not seeing anybody. See, that... In this tribe, we saw that in our first testifying, in our second and the, the, the issue of the club food, we saw that the entire family, yes. they were there on the altar. For the woman that um, 20 years of blindness was broken, it was herself and her husband mm. holding hands to, to say, this is what God has said, and we will stand by it. And finally about her, you know, she, she was not so particular about Papa mentioned my word, or he did not mention my word. You know, sometimes we'll be like, oh, he has not mentioned my kids. He has not mentioned my kids. Papa mentioned my kids. Yes, but as long as you are on the altar, altar. as long as you are in that atmosphere, yes. she didn't reference every any word, particular word. Every word. Every word, every word, is, word is speaking to my situation. Oh, hallelujah. And, hallelujah. and Pastor Bertha, we need to celebrate her friend. Ah, we yeah, need to yeah. celebrate her friend who brought her to the altar of fire, fire, brought her to church, was helping her, and got compensated with her husband. Husband! <laughs> for the husband! Yeah, so for that person that say, Pastor, say, share, 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 you will not oh, yeah, share. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, don't yeah, know yeah. that the compensation is coming. He's there. He's you know, there. You know, it's so amazing that she said she was not praying for herself. Yeah. But God said, I see you. Yeah. I am a Roy. A Roy. I see you as I see your labor of love. love. And I will reward because one of my names is Rewarder. Rewarder. <laughs> amazing, amazing, amazing. And look at her trip to Egypt. It was like God was saying, Your 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 rest season has come. Yeah, go and get your results in style. Mm. Go and get your results in style. She said, you know, everything not, was all expense. Paid. Not like the normal, not like the normal. Just go and get oh, it in style. God. You know, once again, I want to speak to our viewers right there at the Ghana NSPPD conference. Knowing that a Roy sees you. A Roy sees And I'm sure there are some persons that just came because ah, they brought their father, their mother, and the, 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 the miracle should be for them. Listen, you as well will carry your own Amen. testimony. No one will be left behind. Yeah. I want your expectation to be high because a Roy will leave everyone with their package of testimony. Mm. Amazing, amazing. amazing. So this show has been, it's been such awesome. an awesome, it's been one. awesome. We started off with looking at club food, yes. with reverse without surgery mm. in one month. Yes. What would have taken years yes. of various kinds of medical intervention? A Roy stepped in and he did it. We moved over to the second testifier that God broke 20 years, mm. tw not two years, mm. 20 years of barrenness. She had lost a marriage because of 
barrenness. Yeah. But the Roy stepped in, removed um, erectile dysfunction. In, in spite of our menopause, she is now I'm carrying her baby. Baby. And our sister that God had done so marvelous a miracle in her life. Wow, 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 wow. wow. Kilichi, what can you say to our viewers? You know, I, I, I want to celebrate. I want to see Africa arise. Mm. <laughs> because I think that if you look at all the things that's happening around Africa, mm. there's so much negativity, mm. so much news and mm. news of negativity. Mm. And just at this point in time, uh, God mm. has found it worthy that this prayer conference should start happening in Africa, Africa at this time. Oh. So I'm not just looking at the miracles, I'm looking at the revival of Africa. I'm looking at the, the lights. The lights oh. coming to Africa. Ghana, Ghana let light be light. light. West so there's Africa, good, let there, there be light. light. Africa, let, let there be light. light. So I'm seeing light coming oh, to Africa. Hallelujah. And I can tell you, Pastor Bethel, mm. not away from what we are going to take out of testimonies today, oh. we're going to see a complete chain of revival uh, coming yeah, yeah, to yeah, Africa yeah, like yeah, never yeah, before. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah, so yeah, 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 Africa yeah. arise. Wow. <laughs> Africa arise, Africa. It's so amazing. The God of the fire altar, what has he not done? Yeah. What is he not doing? Yeah. What will he not do for you? I want to tell you, a Roy sees you. And it doesn't matter how far gone that case might be. I want to tell you, the God of the fire altar is more than willing, more than willing. to give you your own testimony. NSPPD continues next week, Mondays to Monday to Friday. Join us on all our social media platforms. 7 a.m. is the time. And I assure you, you will also carry your own testimony. Strength Acts of God continues next week, Saturday, 7 a.m. Join us. Have you shared this live stream? Share to your WhatsApp group. Share to your friends. Share to your family. Tell them God is doing amazing things and let them be a part of it. Do you have a testimony of your own and you're here to share? Ah, why? Share your testimony. Send it to the testimony line that is showing on your screen right now. God is still in the business of doing the miraculous. He's still in the business of changing lives. What an amazing show we've had today. God has blown our minds. And once again, for those of us at the Ghana NSPD Prayer Conference, it's going to be amazing today. Open yourself up. God has prepared his choice servant, our daddy, our papa, Pastor Jerry, and we are confident that once again, the power of God will flow and move through him. Join us next week once again on the show, and we know you are going to be blessed. Thank you. Until we meet next time, yes, Dr. Kalichi, thank you, sir. what God cannot do does, does not, not exist. exist. Thank you for joining thank us on the sir. show. Thank you, viewers, for thank joining so us. Much. Until we meet next week, what God cannot do does, does not, not exist. exist. Thank you.